Welcome to Books on Air. I'm Suzanne Harris. Books on Air is a series where we do a deep dive into the writer's passion. We talk about why they wrote the book. We try to find out what their writing process is like, and we also talk about what they hope their reader will take away from the book. You, dear listener, will get a glimpse behind the curtain, if you will. Joining me today is a fascinating, fascinating man. He and I have talked before. His name is Dr. David D. E. Evans, and he's here to talk about his fascinating book, Present Day Romance Tragedy, Romeo and Juliet Style. David, welcome. It's such a pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. Now, you and I have a past. We've talked about another of your books that's titled Honor and Love, Marriage for Peace. This is not a second book. This is an expanded book about the topic. Am I correct? That's right, yes. How did you first come to write a book about this topic. This is about a topic that I think our listeners will be fascinated by and at the same time have a great deal of mixed emotions about. So let's give them a little bit of background about how you decided to write the book and what it's about. Well, it's got a long history. It's got a very important start time. It was 1993 when I read in The Guardian uh, of an Indian man who hanged his son in public in front of the, the villagers with a priest standing by, police standing by, and I could not understand it, and it stuck in my mind. About that time, there was also the sniper shooting of Bosniak Serb lovers attempting to cross the bridge in Sarajevo, now called the Romeo and Juliet Bridge. So that made me focus on the concept of unconditional love, where the couple would rather die than be separated. And this is borne out in all the stories. This is an important micro-history in the in, in story, in Indian stories, because it's a time when reportings of incidents like this came to all India and world attention and led to a social response. I was very lucky that, um, through my wife, um, I had contact with a very senior Indian bureaucrat, his name Dilawar Chet Singh, and he would, he would look at all the papers every day, and over a two-year period, I collected uh, about 40 stories, and then I started a research thesis, and um, the books have led on from that. The small book is written in a more easy-to-read style, but it does carry the important messages. The bigger book has got a lot, not only stories, not only Indian um, folklore, um, but it's also got... um, um, Sorry, it's got a lot of history and information about India and how the system works. My friend Dilawar Chet Singh um, helped me all the way when I wanted to know things about India and Indian culture. So I was in a very nice situation to collect uh, stories over the 20-year period and observe in the reportings of the community response to this, which eventually led to the High Court recommending capital punishment for... Uh, perpetrators who would kill lovers. There's a stage, there still is a stage, where such lovers have to find a safe house. And, and there's a lovely picture I have of couples living in a retreat and sharing a honeymoon together, about 10 couples all together, sharing their honeymoon under police protection. The stories are unbelievable, and that's why I I put together the bigger book that has so much more information. 
It has a second part, and that is um, where I look for the lessons to be learned from the local situation to be expanded into the wider global scene. And as you know, there's a lot of strife in the world that we need to study the paths to peace. So I made this a contrast between the paths to peace um, at the local scene and paths to peace uh, globally. One of the things that captivated me, the title talks about Romeo and Juliet. And I think that so many people, when they hear those two names connected, believe uh, immediately they think of who? William Shakespeare. And I love the fact, as a former English teacher, that you went back to Elizabethan England and you started to talk about where Shakespeare got the ideas for Romeo and Juliet, and there truly was a direct Italian connection. Am I right? That's right. Ro- uh, Shakespeare didn't invent Romeo and Juliet. He retold the stories, and they go back a long way. But there was a, a character called Da Porto in Italy who ran his own Guilletta a Romeo, and uh, that's one of the sources that um, Shakespeare took. But there are other sources. In Da Porto's time, there was a there was a happening. It's called the Cruel Carnival of Udina, where in festival time led to slaughter of nobles. It's a that's a, that's a special micro history, and um, a book has been written about this, an award-winning book about how important uh, that was that situation was in Italian history. And it led to a change in um, uh, attitudes between opposing forces, opposing families. So the sources are detailed and they are very good to read. I agree. And I think that readers will find themselves shocked by the stories that you have to tell. It's hard to believe that in the century that we're living in, in 2024, that people are still unable to marry the person of their choice. And if they do, in some cultures, they run the risk of losing their lives. I find that a shocking statement to hear myself make, David. You know, it's very true. And these incidents just don't happen in India. Uh, and other places, they happen in Western society. And I live in South Australia, and there is a case in front of court at the moment of a family that waylaid their daughter and started stabbing her in public. And they have now been um, in lockup because of that. So these incidents still happen. And there are countries which haven't come to terms with it at all. Um, in Iraq, the Christians and the Iraqis wear different clothing. You could not be seen in public, um, one or the other, holding hands, because that would lead to severe consequences. So there's a lot of communities coming to terms with with it. And, as you might know, there's trouble in Israel, where they are not happy about uh, Israelis marrying pa- 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 um, Palestinians. Right. So it's an ongoing saga, and the book I've written... It tells a lot about uh, not only the incidents themselves, not only the history, but also the um, ways forward of mediation uh, that are possible. The book cover, there's a, a picture on the book cover, and I thought that it was quite compelling. I recognized the picture. Tell me a little bit about why you chose that for the cover and explain to our listeners what the picture is. Well, um, uh, everybody's heard about Cupid, and this is Cupid's kiss where he revived revived the dead body of Psyche. And this is a, um, a sculpture that was first commissioned in 1787 by Colonel John Campbell in England, but in actual fact, this first statue is now in the Louvre in Paris. 
there are two other similar statues in other parts of the world. But it is a very famous story, the story of um, Cupid and Psyche. I thought it was a perfect choice for the cover and the fact that it's part of the statue. It's not the whole thing. It's part of the statue. And our listeners, when they look at the cover of the book, if they have not heard the explanation, they will instantly recognize that statue. And of course, yeah. and of course Cupid is uh, portrayed as a very naughty person, <laughs> shooting his darts of love across cultures, across families, where um, it is inappropriate. Is there a section that you would like to share with our listeners, David? Is there something you'd like to read to them? Well, let me let me just give you the pathway to peace that I um, I wrote in my first book. Every culture, every culture, and let me just say, one of the nicest ones comes from New Zealand, um, Filamo Tutanikai, and has a happy ending. But anyway. Every culture has wonderful, legendary, romantic stories. Every culture has its marital taboos. Romance of this kind is unconditional. Human rights are allowed or withheld by the society or family within which a person lives. Nonviolence is the first acceptable endpoint. Effective law and order is imperative. Family estrangement Remain, remains a legal option. Reconciliation is good and can happen at any time. Acceptance, which may involve surrendering previously held convictions, is very good. Welcome and celebration is ideal. Tell the stories and spread the word. Peace is the enjoyment of good relationships. Has your book resulted in direct change, do you think, in the laws in some countries? Well, this has happened in India. Um, the High Court started awarding capital punishment uh, for perpetrators. Um, well, it's, it is murder. And, yeah, that's right. Um, it's funny in India because uh, those who have been awarded capital punishment um, usually don't get executed. They just stay in jail. Uh, and because India does not, it's only in the worst possible scenarios that executions are carried out. But nevertheless, the awarding of capital punishment was seen as a deterrent, and it was working. There's a film called Cap that was made about these things, and it's a, a very good film to see. Now, you're speaking at a prestigious conference in the next few months. Tell me about about what you're going to say and what what the conference is and how you got chosen. This will be the third time I've been to international um, peace research association conferences. I went to the Asia Pacific one uh, in Kathmandu. I went to the international one in um, Ahmedabad in India. I'm doing this one by room, by Zoom, to Sri Lanka. And I'm presenting the material with updates on, uh, on current scenarios, such as what's happening in Israel and Pakistan, um, sorry, uh, Palestine. Um, and I present the scenario and, and end up with my own theory of peace, uh, local and global, work for all. Um, that's the conclusion of my paper. I think it's wonderful that you're being invited to speak to peace conferences about a topic that's so explosive. David, I think it would be difficult for people on both sides of this issue to be able to talk to one another and to see each other's point of view and perspective. Has that been your experience? Well, the, story, well, the stories from India uh, give stages along the way. Um, one of them, a senior village person said, they should have left and not come home. Another one, their father who'd been trying to keep his 
daughter from marrying a, a Hindu from marrying a Muslim, tried for 10 years, eventually allowed it. He said, this will ruin our social life. We will not see them again, but we will not become violent. So from then on, the, the opposing parties, the family and the newly married, cut their relationships. And that is, when I say family estrangement remains a legal option, that is a step along the way. But after that comes uh, stories of people who have been able to reconcile and eventually able to ce celebrate, a, let's say, an intercaste marriage. So there is movement. Well, there is movement, but, but the moral is it takes a long time to change an attitude that you have brought up with in your family setting. And it gets I... challenged by perhaps a child of yours, and you don't really know how to respond. I can see that. And with all of the connectivity that's happening in our world, I think that it must be harder and harder to keep people, I hate to use the word segregated, but perhaps away from others that they find uh, unacceptable because of all of the connectivity and all of the the ways that we're able to communicate with one another. Do you agree with that or, or, or am I, I off base? I certainly do agree with that, and I think that separation is a, a necessary step in the uh, long-term reconciliation uh, process. Now, uh, when I talk more about the global issues, I like pointing out to people that it took 75 years for Berlin to celebrate the end of World War II with a holiday. Other countries around the world celebrated the end of World War II annually. It took Berlin 75 years to come to that stage. It takes a very long time um, to adjust and move on in a positive way. Another thing that I'll be emphasising um, in this uh, talk in Sri Lanka is the importance of what's called positive peace. Negative peace is end of fighting. Positive peace is moving on to reconciliation and celebration of relationships. This is just so powerful. You and I could just talk about this and talk about this and talk about this, and I'm sure that our listeners are saying to themselves, where can I find a copy of the book? Let me give them the specific title and do a little spelling so that they can find you. Obviously, present day romance, present day romance tragedy, colon, Romeo and Juliet style. The book is on Amazon. The author is Dr. David, D A V I D, D, capital D, space, capital E, space, Evans, E V A N S. S. You can easily find it on Amazon. David, where else, if someone doesn't want to go to Amazon or if they'd like to buy from a different kind of bookseller, where else could they find the book? Well, the, the book is published. Both books are published by Balboa Press, and you can find it there. Um, the other one that is commonly used here in Australia is... Um, um, uh, yeah, is Booktopia. And if you look up Booktopia, you'll find the book there too. Now, let's talk about your website. I know that you have a website. Let's give the <coughs> listeners the w website address, and then let's tell them what they can find there as well. Well, well the website address is B D E. Evans1.com. There's two D's, two E's. D D E Evans1.com. And you'll find the website, which is a memoirs website. 
and you'll find reference to uh, this book. As well as that, you'll find all my other interests and involvements, uh, which I'm uh, I put up there as really as a memoirs website. I, it includes barbershop singing and things like that. So I'm I like people to look at it and see what they can find. Well, and see you. I mean, I know I I actually got to see your face. I looked at the back of the uh, paperback book on Amazon, and there you were. Uh-huh. <clears throat> now, you're also on Facebook. How can they find you on Facebook? Um, well, again, uh, David D. E. Evans Facebook. Look up Facebook and look for David D. E. Evans. Same thing for your ex, your Twitter account, X account? Yes, that's right, yes. And you're also doing Instagram, so they would be able to also find you on Instagram. That's all right, yes, yes. You're a busy man. Tell me about YouTube. Oh, YouTube? Well, I've had a few things put, it, put up there. As I mentioned, I'm interested in barbershop singing. And one of them, I took the opportunity when I was in America to sing with a chant. It's a lovely custom, a side issue to the conference, where you, you, uh, you have international champions and you tap one on the shoulder and sing that part. So that's there if you want to listen to that. I've got some other things. Um, in fact, I've got myself cooking. So whatever, you can find several things on YouTube for mine. Dr. David Evans, you are a renaissance man, a true renaissance man. I can't believe you do all of these things. <laughs> now, I always, and if anyone listens to my podcast on a regular <laughs> basis, they know that I really believe that each author's work is extremely important and extremely personal, and that each author writes a book for a reason. David, when our our listeners become readers and they pick up a copy of present day romance tragedy, Romeo and Juliet style, and they sit down, this to me is not a book that you just will read cover to cover in one sitting. This to me is a book that's a lasting book. This is a book that I would sit down and I would read a part. And then I would I would need to think about it, and I would need to mull it over, and then I would go back, and I might need to reread that part again, or I might go on to the next to the next page. But this is a book that I think people will keep and will read again and again. But they will come to the last page, and they will read the last page of the book. They will close that back cover. You, as the author of the book must have something that you want that reader to take away. What is it you would like for them to leave with, David? Well, my last word is telling the good stories of successes. Leave us with a message of hope. And I'd like to also say that in the U.S. Review of Books, um, it ends with, this is a compelling and unforgettable work that could be a significant source the sociology courses and discussion groups. That's where I'd like to leave it. I'm hoping that it will become part of peace education for people growing up. I think you are inspirational. I think the book is amazing. Both books, I think, would be fascinating to sit down and work with and perhaps create some kind of college course around. It's been such a delight and a pleasure, Dr. David Evans, to talk to you again. Please keep up the good work. Be safe in your travels and good luck at your conference, at your peace conference. And thank you, David, for being my guest today. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Well, thank you very much, and it's an absolute pleasure for me. Thank you. You've been listening to Books on Air, brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Apple, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. Remember, you can find a copy 
of Dr. David Evans' book, Present Day Romance Tragedy, Romeo and Juliet Style, on Amazon. Please keep reading, keep writing, and keep telling your stories. And thank you so very much for listening.